So guys, today, Yellow Sowore came out and made a, shock, a, a shocking statement and a, a shocking exposition about how the Igbos have been treated in Nigeria. Look at what he said. I'm going to play the video so you could listen to some of the uh, you know, uh, things that he said. You know, he made this particular pro, uh, uh, statement when he, when he went for a podcast, they do podcast on honest, on, on honest Bunch and all that. He said something that Nigeria has an Igbo problem. There is a secret memo in the government to be careful of Igbos for an Igbo man to survive in Nigeria as it is currently put together, Nigeria must break. This is a very bold statement. Remember, Obasanjo has made this particular statement earlier that there is an Igbo problem, there is Igbo, Igbo phobia within the country, that some of these political elites, especially from other places, are scared of the Igbos and all that. That is why they don't want them to become the president, which equally played a role in 2023, that some people came out and said that an Igbo man cannot be the president, you know, irrespective of how competent the Igbo man is. And this is a very big problem, because when you speak of marginalization, marginalization when you speak of agitation in the southeastern region, this is one of the things that bettered this issue that we're having in the southeastern part of the country, that they believe that they are marginalized. Some political positions are not being given to them. Some security agencies, they are not heading a lot of security agencies and political positions in the country. And this is why most of them believe they are marginalized. Well, I'm going to play the video so you could see a little glimpse of what this particular man, being, uh, uh, Yellow Sowore, said, because this is a very bold statement. And we're going to take some of the comments of some people to see the various reactions from different areas of the country with respect to what Yellow Sowore said, because it is a bold statement that he made that Nigeria has an Igbo problem, that there is a secret memo in the government to be careful of Igbos. Let me play the video so you could see and listen with your two ears what Yellow Sowore said with respect to this matter. Please, if this is your first time of coming to my channel, don't hesitate to click on the notification button and equally click on the subscribe button so you become one of us to be getting important political updates and news about issues that are actually happening in this particular country. Let me play the video so you could see for yourself. Nigeria has an Igbo problem. There is a secret memo in government that whenever we want to take charge in this country, be careful of the Igbo. Don't give them position. Don't give them opportunity. Otherwise, they will overflow. For an able man to survive in Nigeria, as it is currently put together, Nigeria must break. Wait, oh. Na, the meeting you had with Nnam Dekano. Yes. You are telling us now that Nnam Dekano. Don't you know what happened in the program in this country where people were slaughtered and their bodies and their heads placed inside the train going down south? Even our parents. Wow. Tell us. Ah, Ibo. In 2024, detaining Nnam Dekano against all the court orders, against all the court rulings. So if you listen attentively to before I even read the comments of some people from other areas of the country with respect to what, what Yellow Sowore said, but if you listen attentively to what he said, it's really big somehow, it's a bold statement that needs a lot of investigations and a lot, a lot of you know, uh, scrutiny because this is basically, like there is a hidden memo. He said a hidden memo. That means there is a written agreement that an evil person cannot do this or probably an evil person cannot do that in a country that we call our own. This is where the problem is coming from. This is what bettered the agitation in the southeastern part of the country. A lot of people are still speaking of the marginalization. The other day, uh, they, they, they were talking about the creation of another southeastern state that amongst the six geopolitical zones we have in the country, that is only the southeastern region that has only five states to eat. It's only the southeastern region that only have five states. Why other regions, you know, have more than five states, about six to seven states? And this is a basic problem that a lot of them are speaking. In the last election, you could see it when P2B came out among the three contestants, or probably the three top uh, contestants or contenders who have in the election. You could see that P2B was the most competent. But many people said, some people from other areas, you know, those some people from other regions equally voted for P2B. But a lot of people or some people said that P2B cannot be the president simply because he's an evil man. Some people did not even look at what he was saying. Even P2B himself said, don't vote for me because I'm an evil man. Don't vote for me because you believe that the Igbos have not given, have not been given the chance or opportunity to, to be the president. He made this statement emphatically so that people will not, you know, use sentiments to vote for him. That people should look at his competence and character. But people, you know, still went ahead to judge him based on where he comes from. And people said an Igbo man cannot be the president. Well, let us look at the comment of some people. This person is uh, I.B. Kunle Koya. This is a Yoruba person. He said, there is nothing secret there. Any politics follower of Nigeria know that one. All of us born in the North and the Northerners know this for sure. You know secret for North, rather. This person that, is, that made this particular statement is a Yoruba person. Remember, Yoruba Sobre that equally made the statement is a Yoruba person. It's not like this is coming from people this mouth or probably an Igbo person's mouth. No, it is coming from a Yoruba person's mouth. This person that made this comment is, that I said there is nothing secret there. So this person that made this statement is a little bad person too. So you could see that some people are even agreeing and concurring to what Yellow Sowore said that there is an evil problem in this country. And Odushegu Obasanjo, a whole former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, came out and said it that Nigeria has an evil problem. Remember when some northern elders came to him, he told them that the northern elders should stop, you know, accusing or probably use, uh, uh, t telling the Igbos that, that, that because the Igbos want to secede from the country, that they cannot occupy the number one position in the country, that there is no ethnic group 
that that have not attempted to leave the country. He, he told the Northerners how the Northerners wanted to leave the country. He equally told them how some Yorubas are agitating that nobody should be charged because they have tried or attempted to leave the country. And this is what a lot of people are saying. This is the same thing that Yodo Soboria is saying. These are the Yorubas, or uh, and Joe and Co. are making the same statement every now and then. Let us look at the comments of this other person. This, this person, the one I strongly believe is that parents are really poisoning the minds of their children based on tribal, based on tribal lines, especially. This person is saying that many people, many parents are poisoning the minds of people, of their children, across tribal and religious lines. And this is the major problem we have in the country. You know? That is why I often advocate for return to original form of government. If we have different ideological differences, if parents will come up and start telling their children, don't don't vote for this person, don't love for the, don't love this person, and all that, you could see that ideologically we're not the same. But when we return back to the general government, people with similar ideologies would come together, govern themselves, marry themselves, and do business together. Of course, even if they want to go to another another region to do business, it's still okay. But then it will bring down this ethnic hatred and ethnic tension that APC in particular has brought upon this country. I can boldly tell you for free. So this person said that it, this that he strongly believe that the one he strongly believe that is that the parents are really poisoning the minds of they are young ones across tribal and religious lines. You said that said something. That's a fact. Obi said something similar to that and many others. That's also what is hindering the rapid growth of this particular country. This person said he is not lying. Isn't this that he is not lying? Isn't this obvious? Even when growing up, you will hear parents telling their kids not to play with Omoibo. So people are you know sharing their different their diff their different you know, experiences and how you know uh, some people have homophobia like as if it's something big. Because they've actually, you know, wanted to succeed because of what they believe that they are marginalized and they, you, know, you keep on holding it against them. That, that, that was why Obasanjo said that there is no major ethnic group that have not wanted to leave the country. So, and there is no, that, there is no point holding it against only the Igbos because every person have, you know, wanted to, you know, remove, uh, move out from the country. And the problem is, why not address the reason why these people want to move out? Just because they believe that they are marginalized because of what the rascalities and things that are happening in the country. So these are what a lot of people are saying with respect with respect to what Ayelo Sobo said that Igbos are being marginalized. Well, on another developing story, you know, um, the honest and Igbo today, you know, came out and said that they are planning to write to the new the newly elected president of the United States of America, being Donald Trump, you know, uh, on the uh, release of Mars in Namde Kalo. And I'm going to show you because a lot of people have been trying to you know convince Balami not to tow not to tow the part of Mohamed Bouar, who you know, took it personal upon himself and you know, escalated the case of agitation in the southeastern part of the country. And you could see how the southeast had been you know, uh, uh, militarized and, and you could see the confusion, you could see the insecurities in the southeastern part of the country because of what? How Balame Etinibu, how uh, Bouari did not properly manage the issue of agitation. People are telling that they agitated. The best thing to do is to call them for a round the table discussion and tell them what are your, uh, ask them what are your grievances. Then you people will reach a consensus, but, but the uh, Muhammad Bari, you know, used the kinetic or the military approach, thinking this is going to end the issue, an ideological problem. You are using military approach, which which will not work. But let us look at what uh, the honest recently said. They said something as you can see on the screen, as you could see on the screen. They said we must seek to engage Trump, appealing for him to apply pressure on President Tinubu on Kando's release. Okechuku Isi Guzuro. He said a chieftain of the Apes Ibu Social Cultural Organization, honest and Ibu. A chieftain of the APS Igbo Social Cultural Organization, Hanes Ndibo, Kechuku Isikuzuro, why reacting to the ongoing de detention of the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra at the custody of the Department of State Services, revealed that they must urgently seek to engage the president elect of the United States, Donald Trump, appealing for him to apply pressure on both Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Kastama, and President Tinibu because Nam Likalo was once a vocal supporter of Trump. He said, according to Daily Post, the chief then of the APS Social Cultural Organization, Hanes and Dibo, said, in the face of this challenging landscape, we must adopt a, motif a multifaceted strategy to advocate for Kano's immediate release, mobilizing international influence. We must urgently seek to engage former President Donald Trump, appealing for him to apply pressure on both Britain's Prime Minister and President Tinibu, as Kano was once a vocal supporter of Trump. This relationship can serve as a powerful diplomatic tool in our quest, in our quest for justice. Engaging traditional leadership, we propose immediate outreach to the upper of Lagos and the Sultan of Sokoto and the Sultan of Sokoto and the Sultan of Sokoto. Okechuku Isiguzuru added that the influential positions of the upper of Lagos, Sultan of Sokoto, and Haji Muhammad Saudi Abu Bakr, President elect of the United States of America, Donald Trump, Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Kestama, among others, would allow them to act as mediators who could help facilitate constructive dialogues. Necessary for resolving the ongoing detention of Namdekanu. He also called for a tactical ceasefire from 
agitation group to create a peaceful atmosphere conducive to negotiation, adding that an environment of calm would enhance the potential for meaningful discussion surrounding Nam Dekalo's release. So they are saying that they are going to engage a lot of people, both Donald Trump and a lot of traditional leaders, to find a diplomatic solution, a political solution, to ensure that Nam Dekalo is released. Like I've often said, in my own opinion, I said that the Balami Etimbu should release this matter. There will be internal and balancing peace in the southeastern part of the country. I have kept on saying that I've kept on saying that a lot of Thieves and criminals have hijacked this opportunity to cause him and bring mayhem in the southeastern part of the country. The, one of the most productive regions we have in the country have actually been held captive because of all these criminals that are in you know, parading themselves as as as, as, as this and that.